Today is Thursday, February 23rd. For those watching our work, uh, we have on the board that then probably by the end of next week, we'll have a school construction bill out. I think hopefully we'll push that school safety bill out by the before crossover. And then miscellaneous said maybe toward the end of next week or, or when we get back. Um, and I did put two things at the bottom of, of our board. I just don't want to lose sight of something. You, we could do these things through the budget process and we'll pick them up after crossover higher education. Do we want to do something with teacher debt relief uh, around uh, workforce and then also higher ed marketing is another topic we talked about. And then if people have other ideas, always remember I'm, I need to check with Peter Common, but I believe they are sending us a miscellaneous ed bill also. Do you know what they're sending? You would have been in there. Does that sound familiar? House Education sending us a miscellaneous education bill. No, but it, I'm not. It may yeah. not, I might not have all the yeah, information. Yeah, yeah, they usually do, and that's things that we can always add to if we need to. So, thanks for joining us, Sue. Uh, we have a very rough draft of a miscellaneous education bill uh, that uh, we're going to have a committee discussion about this afternoon with Ledge Council after we hear from you and Jay. But just thought we could go through and together with you and just get your overall impressions of the direction we're going in. Do um, you have a copy? Yes. Okay. So I have an extra. So the way we've structured this so far is we've started out looking at um, State Board of Education staffing and compensation. We have heard from a lot of people. And Jay, good to see you. Maybe we could kind of do this together with, with Sue kind of. Uh, and so we've heard from folks from the State Board of Education uh, trying to understand the amount of work they do, which you know I only have anecdotal information and whether or not they're being compensated adequately. And so we thought we would, and we've heard from people that have you know, been 20 hours a week, it's almost like a part-time job and they get six bucks an hour. So something that we thought would be worth considering and wondering if you guys have any comments on that first section. Yeah. Um the VSBA Legislative Committee met on this miscellaneous education oh, good, bill, good. so I do have um, feedback from that committee because we Great. really didn't have um, necessarily resolutions that covered all the various aspects of this sure. bill. Sure, and we're still, when I say miscellaneous, I mean broad, yes. a lot of work to do. Yes, yeah, yeah. and they, um, I would say, and this was not meant to be um, like glib or disrespectful or anything, sure. but when they the first thing they asked me when they looked at it was, um, and they had it ahead of time, and they also listened to your um, Ledge Council's introduction yeah. for your committee, um, was what problem was it trying to solve? Like, they just didn't sure. necessarily understand I love that. that question. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but they did give some feedback on this um, state board. So staffing. I can only start, let me start with the first part. The problem yeah. that at least is looking to solve is maybe identify. You know, we're hearing that people are working you know, six bucks an hour, some 20, 30 hours a week for this job. Is this in, is this you know similar to what other you know we what we ask other agency boards to do? So that was I would say if you want to, and I appreciate you framing it like that. What is the problem is trying to solve is should we really increase their support? Should we give them some real money for what seems to be a, a lot of work? So what they um, ended up with is um, asking me to advocate for um, including the Commission for Public School Employee Health Benefits in this study. Um, that is a commission that um, bargains for the statewide school employee health benefits. And they would like that um, commission to be considered as well. And there was also some feedback um, so from. Just so I'm, because I don't think, is Ledge Council wa wa watching? She's watching. Okay. So, uh, and she may know this. So you're wondering so, in addition, separate from the state board, would we consider looking at the Commission for School Employees? So, this is another group that does all the board. Yes. And what do they get right now? Do they get any kind of funding or anything? 
Um, they have in the past gotten, I think it was um, the state rate of $55 a day for 10 meetings. Okay. But they, um, it's a lot of work. Um, yeah. Especially during certain um, periods of time. Yeah. And I want to be respectful of that. As you know, the legislature right now is also looking at its own compensation package mm -hmm. and asking the questions, is this adequate? Is this respectful? Does this get people to you know, run for all those kinds of things? I'm sure we all have our own opinions on that. And But I also want to you know, share that broadly. This, mm -hmm. this is the time we're going to start reviewing things. We also have to start looking at the, the individuals that for all intents and purposes are doing a form of volunteer work. Yes. And we don't want to lose people from these conversations. And as we heard from, we talked about equity a lot last year, there are people that cannot do this without getting some kind of um, financial support. And I absolutely respect that. We want people of color. We want um, that are you know, not usually on these kinds of boards, mm -hmm. in part because of financial reasons to be able to do it. Yes. And uh, I would just add that one of the members of our uh, legislative committee is also our representative to VPIC, the Vermont Pension Investment yep. Commission. Okay. And he mentioned that they used an outside expert to conduct staffing, uh, staffing and compensation studies. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that was the way that they approached it, um, which would require allocating some money. Yeah, thank you. I don't know if this is a necessarily a question for Stu, but we'll, when do we get a chance to sort of discuss and chime in on these issues? Oh, should always, we now? always. Should we do this always. now or should we let Stu go through the whole? If you have something, I mean, we can do, I mean, at any point that anybody thinks they want an editor add, just jump right in. Okay. Yeah. So my question about yeah. the um, board is it's, uh, those are appointments, correct? That those the folks on that board they're not necessarily running for office. The or, state board, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So they're appointed, and then just also as I'm thinking about this, because I'm on a school board and we don't get paid a penny, not yeah. a cent. And I'm just wondering if there, you know, if we were to set this precedent, if there might be some trickle down, you know, throughout the state, good or bad. I'm not making a judgment call on it, but just thinking about the implications of, of what that could look like. Those are just a few. Question slash thoughts. Yeah, I know those are good. And I would say, so there are, as you'll find, in fact, this committee will likely approve up to 50 people this year to serve on different commissions and boards related to education. Natural resources will have theirs, transportation. What we've heard, a lot of them are volunteer, but members of low income backgrounds mm -hmm. cannot yeah. afford to literally take half a day or whatever there does need to be some support there and so what this is basically at is just kind of a an assessment is this something we should do and it also as i recall that this and she's watching compares it to other similar boards and commissions some boards and commissions don't have that big of a heavy lift i think we would say some but i think some fish and wildlife boards there's a heavy heavy lift and this is a heavy lift i think i'm assuming that the commission for school employee health benefits is a heavy lift yeah so these are really you know there's a level of expertise we're asking and a level of time and i don't want somebody you know that says i'd love to do it i'd love to do it but i just can't afford it yeah i guess my other thought is if we want to in Increase um, diversity on boards, which I'm obviously 100% for. We, when it comes to an appointment, yeah, it we don't really have. Even if we add a pay element to it or an insurance element, it's still an appointment. So yeah, we don't really have control over. That again, that's another thought. Well, we do. Oh. We, remember, we approve these. We approve. So we could we could say, and this has happened. Okay. We have said that the state board is not diverse enough. Oh, okay. And so that is in the authority of the Senate. Just like we approve justices, we approve courts, all those kinds of things. So this issue of diversity did come up. And the governor, as I recall, I don't remember if we sent names back. You'd have to go back and look. But there was that issue. Okay, great. So, um, but the other thing is, you can ask people, but they still can say no. Because right. they just can't afford it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what in the process is, we'll start to get letters, appointees that uh, the governor will give to us. 
and we'll make phone calls and check in on folks. And we usually divide it up by district. So if there's somebody from a particular district that wants to be on a particular board, I'm sure health and welfare will do this too. Yeah, we're doing that. Are you doing that? Yeah. yeah. Please. Would you like me to go on to this um, yeah. report on statewide course offering? Well, so commission for school employees with health benefits. So you want us to look at that as well? Yes. Yeah. Please. Okay. I mean, that sounds logical to me. And again, we would not move this for this bill for a while. We'll see another draft maybe at the, toward the middle of next week, but um, that'd be great. Okay. Report on statewide course offerings in grade K through 12. Um, the feedback consensus from the committee was they're not opposed to requiring this report. They had a question of whether AOE has capacity to do it, but um, that's they thought that was up to all of you to determine. And so um, feedback on that is great. Generally, yes. yeah. 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 Uh, Proficiency-based learning study committee. Uh, the, second, so it's not yet the feedback on that. Yeah, got it. Sorry, I'm just kidding. Was that they didn't think schools have been doing it long enough to necessarily be able to um, study it. So. They were unsure of the need for this committee, but if it remains in the bill, um, appreciative of the SBA being listed as a member of the committee. And you're not on there now? I think we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just to, if you can refresh our mind, our memories, uh, when, when did the shift happen? Was it uh, 10 years ago? I, I, don't think it was, I was thinking it was less than that, but. I thought it was with um, uh, uh, two flexible pathways. 2012. It may have been that early. I'd have to look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you could be absolutely right. By the time it got implemented, I think. Yeah. We yeah. can go back and take a look. Yeah. I can find out some more information about that. Uh, remote teacher grant program. Um, this one, they didn't necessarily feel like they had enough information to respond now and um, would like the opportunity to come back later after there's been some testimony from subject matter experts. Yeah, so, and this might not, the committee may feel as though we don't need this. We heard last week from a couple of teachers. What I was trying to, what came up early this year in testimony was, or maybe I was just raising it in, in, in my own brain, was are there districts that um, need to have, you know, certain classes taught, but because of the teacher shortage, they're not able to find people. They don't, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're not getting, um, you know, teachers can't, as you know, the, a lot of these are external factors, can't afford a house in the area, can't find a house in the area, all that kind of thing. And so, you know, was there anything there that we needed to do to, to really be able to help some of those districts, um, some of those schools be able to get that third year of math or that, language arts class kind of thing. Um, so that was sort of the, uh, sort of the thought behind it. I don't know if that's helpful to you or if you want to weigh in knowing that. Maybe, and I guess the question to you would be, gosh, you know, Brian, I don't know if there's really that much of a need or yes, I can see there's kind of a need for that. I think it would be helpful to have some data on whether there is a need for okay. it. Yeah, because that they didn't. And then maybe know. some funding yeah. if need be. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the other thing is, I think Senator Jewett raised this last time, a lot of this stuff would just be part of their annual budgets, you know, mm -hmm. uh, voted on if you need an extra teacher. I was thinking more also any particular, is there, an, is there any need to supplement funds for technology or you know, certain kinds of technology? But um, that was just sort of the, the thought around it. Yeah, Senator Jewett. And this is sort of above and beyond the VTVLCs and the Vermont learning, um, the virtual learning, um, all those virtual learning platforms. And so this would be above and beyond that. Well, you raise a really good point. And when I left it last time, when we had these teachers come zoom in, I wasn't feeling as much of a need for this, honestly, but maybe we could just kind of keep the conversation going and see if anybody comes in and says, gosh, we really do need more of this. But if, if schools are already able to do it through their budgets and are able to access the technology, I think the big block is still broadband in certain areas. Mm -hmm. 
which, you know, in my area of broadband is being built out really quickly, but I, I know that in other areas it might not be. So, uh, oh, and I see. Um, Great, thanks. Uh, so we'll just keep it there for now and okay. marinate on it. We'll see if it goes anywhere. Okay, Vermont Post Secondary School Marketing, they did not have comment sure. on that section. Sure. Um, the And this I should mention, we've had people in, you know, around higher ed stuff. Can we start to market ourselves, you know, market all of our institutions of higher education in a way that says, hey, soup to nuts here come check things out. We know, you know, the other way we can think about it, honestly, is the committee could also say, maybe we just do the state colleges, you know, maybe that's where the funding goes. If you ask me, that's where maybe the funding needs to be focused. I know this isn't necessarily, you know, something that your members might not be as fluent in, but we are hearing that um, places like University of Southern New Hampshire, their marketing like it's like 800 million, maybe it's 300 million. I mean, it's huge, it's huge. And, you know, council, you know, our state yeah. colleges. So it, one way to think about it, and I guess I'm talking aloud as we start to think about this is, do we focus on state colleges? You know, something mm -hmm. for the to think about. Senator Reeves. Oh, no, I, I would uh, submit that we need to focus on the uh, state as a system of post-secondary education and, and, uh, and market the, the entire group uh, certainly focus on state schools, but uh, this, what we're really trying to do is uh, is recognize one of the economic engines of the state. Yeah, I think this is a, a good signal. I, I think that we could send a, a very strong signal uh, with a, a strong infusion of tourism marketing uh, budget. Uh, yeah, I want to second what he's what Senator Weeks is saying. I mean, you know, like I said when we were first talking about this, when I just came up for a visit and hung out at UVM right. for a weekend. And that is what drew me to move here after checking out Burlington and about different parts of the state. So I think it's definitely a good investment to look into the marketing aspect of, you know, not just the state colleges, but, you know, the state as a whole and, you know, everything that we have to offer. Okay, that's good. I'll talk to Senator Ron Hinsdale about it and the chair of uh, Approps and see if, you know, if either it would stay here or maybe go into another bill, but it sounds like we have some consensus. Pre kindergarten. Yeah, so. This, um, yeah, please go ahead. This, uh, as I understand it, the, the current law language was put in um, with some highlighting to show the um, areas that might need to be changed if. To, if you were to allow um, fund, public funding to go to programs in bordering states, and it really um, hinged on the standards. Yeah. And so, and as um, I recall, Stu, you may know this. This is Senator Mitchell's constituent yes. who, yeah. Okay. Yes, I did explain that. Great. Okay. Yeah. And um, so the feedback on that one is that um, Vermont standards should not be lowered in order to allow out of state pre K attendance. And the question was, is there another way to address the problem this language is trying to solve? I don't know if there is, but. Okay. okay. And then lastly, the report of the working group on status of libraries in Vermont. Yes, and I, uh, page, there we go, 17. So for this one. Um, and the, I, I should just mention on the appropriation side. Uh, as we'll all find out in those last couple of weeks, all those bills we really want that have any money in them at all end up in the Senator Kitchell, Senator Starr, Senator Sears, Senator Westman. So I usually try to accommodate <laughs> anything that any of those four or five people ask for. Yeah, or at least four of them, whatever four out of the seven vote. Yes. Oh, no. no okay. Uh, so for the last section, um, report of working group on status of libraries yeah. in Vermont, there wasn't um, mm -hmm. feedback on that as it, um, they didn't uh, see that it pertained directly to education. Um, it was language regarding um, libraries that are not in schools. Right. Right. Yeah. If I could, can we go back one step? Yeah. to uh, pre-K. Yeah. So we were dealing with the pre-K issue in the uh, Health and Welfare Committee uh, in depth for quite some time, well, since the very beginning. So I'm just curious, 
if the intent here is to kind of pick up the language from health and welfare or let no no, no so I, I'm, what, so what's what's the intent so as i recall and i know beth is somewhere in the World Wide Web right now. Um, I just shirt my age. <laughs> uh, hey, Beth. Uh, Senator Hello. Mitchell has a constituent that wants to be able to like just go over the border for pre-K okay. instead of driving the kid. As I recall, the person came and said maybe it's a 40-minute drive. And so that's what we were trying to figure out. Is there something that we need to do? For that to happen, or can that just sort of happen all the way? And I think your point's a very good one. So we don't want to lower standards so people can go over the border. We want to make sure they're getting that same uh, quality. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Senator Julek, do you think you want to add anything for financial literacy or civics? And is there anything that you might be thinking about or anything that? It's no pressure kind of thing. We've got plenty of time, but I know you've raised them both. We've talked about civics. We have time. You know, it's uh, so it's not just you, right, but it's right, anybody right. who's thinking: Do we need information back on either of those? Do we want to move forward with some financial literacy kinds of things? Yes, yeah. so civics. I feel pretty good about just judging by what we've heard from the Secretary of State and yeah. some other folks. Um, but I would like to explore the financial literacy. So okay. that might be, you know, hearing from the bees yeah. and um, some other folks who are working in districts to hear what they have to um, say about that. I don't want to add more work to their plate yeah. in a time that's already quite stressful. But um, it, it, I, I have spoken to some educators who think it's a great idea. And we had some pretty compelling testimony a while back. So yeah, we could explore it. Yeah. So do you happen to know, and maybe this is a Jay or Jeff question, a teacher or two who could talk to us about anything they're doing right now around financial literacy might be a way to sort of kick off the conversation, just something to, to think about. Yeah, that, I think that might be a, a Jay or a Jeff Fannin question. Yeah. I, I do know as a high school teacher, but, and I know the program is Perfect. Let's go with that person. Okay. All right, so you've got somebody. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Sklowski? No. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Feel free to stick around. Okay. We have refreshments at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could. It's my birthday. So. Is it? So Happy birthday. birthday. Oh, oh, this is a week for both of yeah. I have one Friday. Yeah. Senator Williams had one yesterday. Oh, wow. Wow. Wonderful. Oh, I see. Right. So what right. happened nine months? Yeah, right. I know. I sometimes take that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, we, we could offer you some trail mix too, but that's all I see. <laughs> all right. Mr. Nichols. Good afternoon. For the record, Jay Nichols, Executive Director of the Vermont Principals Association. I'd like to say, Chair, that one of the reasons I like to testify in person is so that I can grab you ahead of time. My plan was to testify first and announce Sue's birthday and have you guys uh, our time uh, but you called on her first so i got uh wasn't able to do it I, once again, yeah i screwed up add it to the list jay <laughs> but i appreciate that you were thinking of her and i'm glad we had a chance to wish her happy birthday when is your birthday jay uh that's a, a, a no comment sir okay. <laughs> uh would you a social security number <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so let's go. Uh, section one, Jay, uh, yes. state four. You've been around for a while too, and you know any thoughts on yeah. you know this on the commission piece that uh, Sue mentioned? Anything else that you think we need to be thinking about as we look at how we you know treat Vermonters who are doing this kind of work? Yeah, so we the VPA fully support uh, what's in the bill. Uh, we do think there should be a look at the state board in terms of composition. I've got written testimony in there. We think that um, the state board for the last uh, you know, almost decade has been really heavily private school oriented. We think it should be more public school since most of our kids are public school. So we think that's something that should be looked at. In terms of composition, I mean, uh, compensation for boards, I had no idea that some of these people were making $6 an hour. That's awful. 
Um, they work yeah. so hard, some of these folks, Senator. I think people like me and Sue and stuff like that, when you stick us on committees, we shouldn't get anything. We're getting paid to kind of advocate for that work. But volunteers are really volunteers. I think we should really do a much better job of supporting them because it's really easy for them to say no. And we, as you mentioned, we want representation from different sections of society. So anything you could do in that area, we we would fully support. Yeah, and you know, I'm more than happy to look, uh, rework uh, and consider that recomposition of the state board, independent, public, people, you know, whatever mix, how do we prioritize diversity? If you have, you know, we can certainly put that into this. I don't think anybody would disagree how we, you know, kind of, I, I don't know if there's anything, we can talk to Beth about it, what the guidelines are now versus what they should be. Right. And I think that would be true, you know, in fish and wildlife, for example, I know there's always conversation around, you know, how many trappers, how many hunters, how many conservationists, even though actually I would argue hunters are some of our best conservationists, uh, but people who don't hunt, you know, all that kind of conversation happens also. So um, good. Being this yeah, a hunter. Sense. Having been dragged out into the woods many, many times as a boy. <laughs> Me too. Yes. Okay, section so, two. Please go ahead. So the statewide course offerings, um, echo and sue a little bit. My only concern is making sure the AOE has the resources necessary to accomplish everything federal law already requires them to do and anything additionally required by Vermont. Um, I continually worry, I've been saying this for years, about the capacity of the AOE to successfully function at the level necessary to be truly successful in providing oversight, which I think they do reasonably well with public schools, and providing yeah. appropriate levels of support for the field, which I think is an area that's yeah. lacking. We've heard that this year. We definitely yeah. heard that this year. And um, They've got great people there, too. I don't want to imply that they don't. Oh, I just think sometimes it's just too much. People. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would also say, um, you know, last year we talked about, you know, is there some way to just sort of do a general audit? I also respect that Secretary French, when he comes in and says, you know, listen, we're nimble. We need to change. We need to add people, you know, do all, you know, shift things around. But I, I, we've also... Yeah, we've, we've heard that that, that agency um, has some staffing issues for sure. And not that we'd be able to find those people right now in this in this job market, but uh, we increase we did increase last year, I think, positions by adding the literacy person. Um, and uh, maybe they may have had one other hire, but their points well taken. Okay, proficiency based learning. So the Agency of Education has recently had renewed leadership in this area with a portrait of graduate work and practitioners around the state are continuing to, you know, revise and improve their systems and approaches related to this. We do not think that it's necessary nor a good use of time uh, without appropriations for continued development implementation at this time. I think the law is 10 years old. I think Act 77 is 10 years old, but yeah. I think the actual implementation and putting in um, schools actually come, in, come into bear. I think this senior class or maybe last year's senior class might've been the first one or two that really were kind of underneath this system. So I, I do agree uh, with Sue, even though I don't have that in my written testimony that I don't think we're in a rush to do that. And I think if we get to the point where we're ever gonna look at this, Maybe the study is more on Act 170 C Act One, excuse me, Act 77 in its entirety, and looking at you know what's working in terms of dual enrollment, what's working in terms of uh, PLPs, what's working in terms of PBL, what what should be changed. Maybe it's more of that conversation, and I I would love to put that off for a couple of years, given everything that we're we're contending with right now. So. Um... I would tend to agree with you if we hadn't heard, you know, from teachers that are saying it's maybe, you know, again, this isn't a, we're going to get rid of it. This is sort of a, let's see, just kind of a touch base to see how things are going kind of thing. Yeah, and see, I, I don't have a major problem with that. Reactor. Okay, what's that? I don't have a major problem with that. I, I just think yeah. uh, you, if you talk to 100 different teachers in 100 different schools, you're probably going to get 100 different answers. 
And a lot of it depends yeah. on how it was implemented at the local level in that school. Yeah. Yeah. Senator Kuehl. I was just wondering if instead of sort of speculating on who likes it, who doesn't, which I agree with um, Mr. Nichols that probably get a wide array of opinions. <clears throat> is there a way that we can look at some data to suggest that it's working or not working? Um, test scores, graduation rates, I don't know, anything that might help us form a decision or not form a decision in this area. And that's what we would have the, the that group do the question is to your point is what do we have them look at all right well we'll keep working on it and see if we can get you know ask this group to look at like you said certain things um to just sort of touch base sort of like a 10-year anniversary here's where we're at you know again i'm not looking to get rid of it, it doesn't need to be touched but the other thing is I think it was Jeff Bennett, you know, there might be some things that need to change now 10 years into it to make it better. So, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to read you, Jay. I used to get, you know, if you're sitting right here, I'd be able to read you better. I can't <laughs> tell if, you know, this is the worst idea in the world or if you're like, yeah, you know, this isn't, this isn't that bad. No, if it was the worst idea ever, I think I'd be pretty straight <laughs> with you and tell you, Senator, this is the worst idea ever. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Kewitt. I'm wondering, just to uh, take uh, Mr. Nichols's lead, if we should just, yeah. at some point in the future, take a deep dive on Act 77 instead of just focusing on uh, proficiency-based uh, learning. Because, I, I mean, we could probably all stand to learn about that act and then maybe take a look at how it's, how it's going. Yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. I think maybe what we do is if we we could do it a couple different ways we could let this go with just looking at the proficiency base the other thing we could do is we could if we don't have time to add the x77 we could ask the house to add the x77 to be looked at and we could sort of you know do some testimony that way it might be yeah. good senator senators to have jessica carlos come in and just give an overview yeah. of it especially with a pretty new committee pretty new uh, Jess is back. She's been away. Yeah, let's have Jess come in. Thanks. Good idea. Thanks, Jay. Um, Remote teacher? Yeah, so you can probably hear we're sort of, you know, is this really necessary? Is it not? Kind of thing. What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking that you know, in general, we support this as an option when there's no other viable option available. And, you know, we'd want to see what the program was and how it'd be implemented. And we'd like to encourage the use of the Vermont Virtual Learning Cooperative as, a, as an option yeah. and to make sure that uh, we have limited costs to any schools that are trying to avail themselves of the opportunity. So I'm thinking of a place like maybe Canaan um, may not be able to get a teacher for a certain thing and might want to have this kind of option. We'd want to make sure it wasn't cost prohibitive, if at all possible. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. And post-secondary school marketing, um, I, I it's hard for me to see who said it. I think it was Senator Williams um, that talked about Vermont and, and the Vermont schools, or maybe it was Senator Hashim. Whoever said it, I, I agree. That's my testimony on post-secondary school marketing. Let's, let's try to get people to come to Vermont, see Vermont, and then let's try to get them to stay here. Jay. Uh, might I ask if feel free to punt this if it's not a if you feel comfortable asking. Did you were you from the state? Did you come to the state for college and stay? Uh, I was from here. I was a poor Vermont kid, first generation, go to college and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and you, I went to Johnson you, State College. You went to Johnson. Yeah, and then St. Mike's for my my uh masters. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um pre-kindergarten. So you all know how I feel about pre-kindergarten and my testimony in writing says that I, it's, I, I went back to the four-year-old thing again. Um, in terms of kids out of stay and the concern that was brought forth, um, I, I agree with Sue and I think you all agree that if we're going to do that to some, to some um, early childhood provider that's in a, a bordering state, then they need to have rules that are at least as rigorous as what we have in Vermont. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to understand also a little bit more if we're opening up a huge can of worms by doing that. 
but um, okay. yeah, yeah. And then uh, any thoughts on uh, status of libraries? No, I had no comment on that section. Um, I just don't know enough about it to really feel like I could weigh in on it. Okay. Anything for Mr. Nichols? That was that was helpful. Good. Yeah. Okay. See, all right. see you soon. Thank you all very much. Please make sure you help Mrs. Zelsky out of the room at her age. You know, she might need some help. <laughs> Bye, <Bye-bye>, everybody. <laughs> I won't even ask. <laughs> We won't go there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thanks, Dave. So what we'll probably do is once we get uh, a clean version, you know, you're always welcome to come back in and weigh in on it again. Or if you just want to say by email, thumbs up, no thumbs up. This is what I'd like to change. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Beth. Hello. How you doing? I'm well, how are you? Doing pretty well. Um, and Mr. Gillespie, do you mind sticking around for just one minute while we ask? Sure. Sorry, Beth, to address Even though you. it's your birthday. Even though yeah. it's your birthday, I apologize. <laughs> um, in this first section of the miscellaneous ed bill that we have, um, Mr. Gillespie mentioned, in addition to examining the staffing and compensa compensation for the state board, if we would consider also examining the Commission for School and Employee Health Benefit Group. Do you have a sense, and this might be something Mr. Glaske can answer, how many people are on that board right now? I don't, I can easily look it up. I have the governor boards and commission page, but if Sue knows the answer. Yeah. So uh, each side has five commissioners and two alternates. So that would be, um, 14. Okay. You just tell us how it works, if you don't mind. Because you've got seven on both sides. Yes. Yep. Yes. And, and so they, um, this law went into effect, um, I believe it was in 2018. Okay. Um, and so there have been two rounds of bargaining. Yeah. Um, they, the, the commissioners are appointed. Um, the law states who appoints the commissioners. Okay. Um, and they do the bargaining for the um, statewide school employees health benefits. Yeah. So that they're, the next year they'll be entering into the third round of bargaining. Okay. So they um, need. Seems like a lot of people at a table to bargain for 10. Seems to be working. I mean, I guess I, I didn't need to ask that. I just, yeah. Can you tell me? I could, I could, I'd be happy to have uh, the chair. E each side has a chair. So it. I'd be happy to have the chair come in and speak. That'd be great. If you yeah. have and I'm chair. sure you'd want to hear from, you know, uh, both sides. Um, and this is not really, you know, I'm not asking for one side. I'm talking about the entire, just looking at the entire, you know, commission, just yeah. like you're looking at the state board. Yeah. Anybody have any concerns with looking at this? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't understand the two sides. Do you want to explain to how it works? Yeah. So um, they, it's, it is um, collective bargaining at the state level. So that's for health care. For health care. Yes. And so on one side, you're going to have the mm -hmm. uh, five people, seven people appointed by whom? By the Vermont School Boards Association. And then the other side? The other side, um, they're appointed by the Vermont NEA. And then there's also, I think, um, one person that is appointed by another um, union. Good question. Okay. Any issues with adding this kind of study? Anything? No. Okay. Okay. Great. Mr. Glowski, would you put that in our next draft? I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure. Feel free. feel free to leave it anytime. <laughs> this St. James, if you're still ledge counsel, would you mind? Thankfully, not that we wouldn't love to. Thank Happy birthday. Happy birthday. See you later. Um, would you mind putting that in the second draft, in, in the next draft? 
Yes, but I have a couple points I'd like to make about this section, if you'll indulge me. Absolutely, please go ahead. Thank you, Beth St. James, Office of Legislative Council. Um, a couple things. Um, JFO is probably not the right organization to uh, conduct this type of study, especially if you're um, asking for policy recommendations. Um, yes, I just received a text from Catherine uh, Benham saying just that. Yes. Um, so Stu mentioned um, that the um, uh, VPIC, which is the Vermont Pension Investment Committee, um, newly became an independent, or I'm sorry, commission. It went from a committee to a commission, I believe last session, um, and they were required to hire their own consultant to do a study on staffing and compensation. And so for the state board piece, I would suggest either AOE or the state board um, hiring a consultant and, um, and uh, to carry out that study and make those recommendations um, and, it, and start and replacing JFO in that context. I would recommend agency of education for now. Okay. Um, and then I do want to say, so I am not um, and terribly familiar with the Commission on Public School uh, Employee Health Benefits. Yeah. They are different for many in many ways from the State Board of Education. And I just want to, um, their staffing and expenses are um, uh, the authority for them uh, to have staff and the allocation of their expenses is different than the State Board of Education. And that is that they're, they have permission in state law to hire staff as necessary to carry out its duties. And I believe the similar language to the State Board. But current law specifically states that compensation for commission staff and administrative expenses of the commission shall be shared equally by school employers and school employees. And those costs shall equitably be equitably apportioned um, among their members. So it's not a completely analogous situation for a study. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't know much more about this organization, but I would encourage you to think about two completely separate studies. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. And what then I would recommend we do is if you would draft what Sue Siglowski just recommended to us as a amendment, if you will, and we will hear from peer testimony and then the committee can decide whether or not we would want to amend the miscellaneous education bill with Sue's amendment after hearing some testimony. Um, sure. And you don't have to make any amendments at this point because there's nothing that's been introduced. So it would just be a new draft, right, no, so we don't no, have to I'm be that formal. That, yeah, I'm just talking about not any any official way, but I'm just saying, you know, as a as a way to as a vehicle to sort of make the policy decision in the end. Sure. So I'm adding another study on the compensation and staffing of the Vermont Commission on Public School Employee Health Benefits. Is that accurate? Uh -huh. But you're not adding it to this draft. You're going to add it as if, you know, in a separate sort of, as if we were to amend it later on, speaking not officially as an amendment, but just as a separate vehicle in which we will take testimony and maybe then eventually add it to the miscellaneous education bill. Orphan language, no problem. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Um, and then just to be clear, are you thinking the same? They have to hire a consultant to do the study? I think for now you can put that in and as okay. we dig into it in the next couple of weeks, we can decide. Okay. Okay. Great. So then I think uh, as it relates to uh, section two, we are going to be hearing from Secretary French about the statewide course offerings and whether or not Agency of Education has enough resources to do that work. Um, while we're on the topic, does it make sense for anyone else to do that work? I, I wouldn't, I mean, I guess the only thing this committee could do would be to have the Agency of Education hire a consultant, but I think let's talk to Dan about it and see what he thinks and then go from there, please. I think it would be relatively straightforward to commission the Commission the study. Yeah. We fund the study. 
and they figure out how to conduct the study. If they can't do it in house, then they subcontract it. That's fairly straightforward. It seemed to be. So we can ask that when Secretary French is in, if, if that's the way that they want to go about it. One of the things Secretary French said, said over the years is like, I can save the 150,000 or I can save the 100 by kind of doing it in house, and we can give them that, that option. Sounds good. Section uh, three, efficiency based learning uh, study committee. We're going to continue to take some testimony on it next week. Uh, we'll also look at the possibility of doing uh, something around Act 77. Um, but uh, I don't think there's anything to do there. And the remote teacher grant program, let me just give some thought to this. I just, I think Jay Nichols' point around, are there some rural districts that might need some, some additional funds to help them uh, might be the way for me to think about it. Since I'm the one that's kind of maybe pushing this the most, I'll just give some thoughts and try to convince the committee one way or the other. And, We'll see where, where, where people land. The Vermont Post-Secondary School Marketing. Um, I will talk to Senator Ron Hinsdale today and Senator Kitchell about budget items and see what we can or cannot do around this. And uh, I don't know if we heard a number from, I think the one number we heard from the chamber and others was right now the state's marketing is three million? 3.5. 3 million. Okay. So I'll talk to Senator Ron Hinsdale and others and see if, if they can also get behind what I think this committee would support is some additional funds to the agents to through the to the agency and or the agency of tourism to come up with something to help market it, market higher education. Uh, and then I'm the pre-kindergarten. Beth, am, are we opening up? And I'm sorry I missed this if it's the first time. Is, would this be the first time of somebody would be going over the border for pre K? Are we opening this up? And so, you know, every go ahead. Um, so, a couple of things. One, just to be clear, section six in your miscellaneous bill makes zero amendments to current law. There's no changes right. in the bill, it's just a right. holder. Um, I um, I can't comment on whether or not you're opening up a can of worms, um, yeah, sure. that's subjective. Um, yeah. I, I think I encouraged you when I did the walkthrough and I would encourage it again to ask AOE to come in and speak to what they believe um, uh, the holdup is in allowing uh, a student to use Act 166 funds to attend a pre-K program across state lines because there's nothing there's, not, there's nothing in here that says you can't go to a pre-K program in New Hampshire or out of state. Yeah. My understanding is it's an interpretation and it may be the intent behind the law, but intent is for you to breathe life into, not me. Um, yeah. And I didn't draft one, Act 166. Um, yeah. But um, I believe what you'll hear is that the way that um, AOE is interpreting um, the qualifications of these programs is that it's really only Vermont programs that may qualify. But I would I would really encourage you to hear from AOE on those interpretations, not not me, um, because they're the ones who are saying yay or nay to the tuitioning request. I right. will also We're say oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, I will also say if you're if you're also looking at and I have not um, heard uh, all the testimony you've taken on the topic of pre-kindergarten, but if you are looking to do, uh, to make, you know, I think it's, at, uh, I actually don't remember the bill number, but the, the pre-K and child care uh, bill uh, that, is, that came out this session. Yep. Um, if you're looking at, at, at making large programmatic changes like that, um, yep you know, uh, consolidating changes um, would be helpful, you know, rather than making one small change in the miscellaneous bill and then a larger change in a larger bill. Um, That's a great and then, point. 
and then um, because they may not they may not match. And if they're if they're coming out of your committee, that's definitely something to think of. And then the last yeah. piece I will just say is that historically and and going forward, um, I co-staff pre-kindergarten with Katie, my colleague Katie McClinn. Right. So, so going forward, if you're um, hearing testimony on uh, changes to the pre-kindergarten program and statute, um, and certainly if you're asking for any drafting, um, we should ideally both be in the room for that. Yeah, and for what it's worth, Hayden did tell me that. Um, so I can assure you it's my mistake. Uh, just, Mr. Ross. Just, given a, just given a plug um, because it's so hard to coordinate schedules. I just want to just want to yeah, make a plug for that. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, working group on status of libraries. I don't know if yes. Please. Can I just make one recommendation yeah, on, the, on the last uh, the last section is, was uh, pre kindergarten education. I just recommend changing the title to to alleviate confusion and call it like cross-border pre-kindergarten education or something to that effect because we're about to go into this big confluence. If we don't join, if we don't move this into S56, yeah. Yeah, we just need to be able to really clearly differentiate what, what, what I'm intending. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. Are you talking about the reader assistance heading? Yes. I can certainly make that change. Great. And then, Beth, on the uh, library study, um, I think we discussed about uh, just adding this, and I, I, I'm not sure if it already has it in there. Um, thank you. Uh, this is about, we were going to ask the, the group that's already looking at libraries to consider this one extra piece in their report. And their report is due back when? It is due uh, November 1st of this year. Okay, so they have some time to, to look. And we would do that, we would direct them in statute to do that. Yeah, so I did add language here. So this is a piece of session law creating a working group to report back to the legislature with recommendations. And I did add on page 18, to their powers and duties, uh, they shall study whether current law, lines 15 and 16, or the current law provides adequate protections for libraries from firearm violence. And then their recommendations um, need to include on page 20, lines 20 through 21, um, recommendations for legislative action regarding firearm and weapon safety on library property. Okay. So perhaps you and I could look at a new draft together uh, tomorrow afternoon sometime. We could just yeah. go through it and then we can present it again to the committee next week. Sure. And I'll wait uh, if anybody else wants to join us after tomorrow, you may need after three or four, something like that. We can just grab that and just go through it. Yeah, Library. Yeah. The State Department of Libraries. Are they, do any of these college libraries fall mm -hmm. under that, or could they, or should they? I mean, it's another layer. Uh, I could be wrong with this. Uh, did you hear the question? I didn't. Uh, about whether or not, correct me if I'm wrong here, Senator Williams, in, uh, can I repeat the question? Yep. Do our state universities, <clears throat> the libraries at our state universities fall under the heading of any power or authority that any kind of library commission that might exist has in the state. And I don't, I think all libraries are very individual, right? You could have a library has its own board of trustees in a town. You could have the state university libraries. Is there any yeah. overarching authority for libraries in the state? Well, there's the Department of Libraries, um, and this is not in my portfolio, so I'm sorry I can't speak as uh, eloquently as I could. Um, but there is the um, let's see, there is a there is the Vermont State, uh, there is a, a State Department um, regarding libraries. What their duties are, I can't speak to. Um, as far as if you're asking that question in relation to the firearm piece, 
Mm -hmm. If you're asking that question not in relation to the firearm piece, I can certainly um, consult with my colleague who handles library matters um, and either here I can get back to you on um, uh, kind of control of libraries or regulatory authority over libraries. Yeah, in the state. I think but that's how, how are they regulated and whether or not our libraries at the state college fall under their regulations in any way or if they're just fall under the regulations of the institutions themselves. I think they just fall under the regulations of the institutions themselves. But if you could check with your colleague who has expertise in libraries, that would be great. If that, sure. if that, yeah. You know, Sam, you? All right. Um, I don't know. Okay. I know the Department of Libraries oversees the public libraries, but are the state libraries right. part of the public system? Because right. they are even the municipal public. Board. public so. yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah. question. They yeah. even have the board, their own board of directors. Yeah. In most cases, but the, they still follow under the state library system. Right. <clears throat> okay, I think we're good. Okay. I will have Maybe a new we'll draft for you tomorrow. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See you. <clears throat> Okay, let's take five minutes, we'll come back. We're gonna uh